Jonathan Weinberg, and this is Drawing with Fountain Pens, where I talk about fountain pens and art and design. Remember, you don't have to be an artist to get something out of this, but you have to be somebody who is intrigued by fountain pens or love fountain pens and, above all, shuns ballpoint pens. A ballpoint pen! The students are not using them for assignments, I hope. No. Remember to support the channel, click the like it button, and also remember to subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. Um, today I'm going to talk about um, a wonderful pen, um, I think, the Aeon from Lamy, uh, that kind of crosses all these different areas of art and design um, and fountain. This is the, the red version. Um, it originally came in a black version and a silver version. And um, it's designed by the very well-known designer, Jasper Morrison. Now, one of the things that, um, as somebody who's fairly new to doing these reviews, um, and even maybe only really only gotten into the fountain pen uh, obsession in the last few years, it kind of surprises me that there's not more attention given in the fountain pen community to the kinds of amazing things Lamy is doing and the way that they um, approach some of the great designers um, in the world of industrial design to get to um, make their fountain pens and really rethink what a fountain pen is. Um, now, of course, their, their pens are reviewed, but there isn't that much spent on the actual designers. And that's be, given the fact that I'm an art historian and a curator and an artist, and I, I spend a lot of time with designers. Um, that's the part that really excites me. Now, I'm always saying that I'm really interested in the nibs and how the pens write, but I increasingly, as I get into this whole obsession, I'm more and more interested and love the way the pens look. And this is a pen that I think is actually really, really a beautiful, beautiful, but it's it's quite subtle. And that, in fact, is the paradox of Jasper Morrison's designs. Uh, this pen was first introduced in 2017 in, in this sort of olivey silver. It's very subtle. Um, it looks pretty much just like silver, but there's a slight green cast to it. And then also in black, here's the black black version. And uh, since then, they've come out with a green and a blue, bright blue and a red. Um, I have the red. Uh, and most recently with a very dark blue um, color. Um, Lamy, is, it, it's very interesting. They don't employ supposedly an in-house designer. They always go outside to get a designer. And then once the designer comes up with a new idea for a pen, they go to work figuring out how to make that pen. And I think that's really a fascinating approach. I think what it does is it really helps Lamy sort of stay fresh and think about things in a new way. Obviously, though, I don't think they go to designers who would make something that would be so completely different from the general Lamy aesthetic. Um, so they kind of approach people that I think are going to be simpatico with what, with what they're doing, and yet that nudges them in different directions. Um, I think in particularly thinking about design and good design makes us question the whole, a whole sort of ball game of fountain pens. I mean, after all, a pen is quite a simple object, and how do you make it differently? What do you, what makes a good fountain pen? Uh, is it just about the way it feels in your hand, the materials, um, the way it writes, the way it looks, how heavy it is, how light it is? All these things are really come into question when a new designer comes on the scene and sort of tweaks them and makes us think about things differently. And I find that very exciting. The other thing is that Lamy is a big company. So you're thinking about industrial design here, what is possible on mass rather than uh, smaller pen companies, uh, which often are just one person or a few people, where they're basically using machines but working them by hand. There are different uh, issues involved in pens. And so it's more craft-based in, in that case. And it's kind of exciting to have 
all these different kinds of ways of thinking about pens. Anyway, um, Lamy um, uh, approached Jasper Morrison, who is a British designer uh, born in the late 50s, uh, and someone who actually has made quite a splash. Um, now, there's a certain paradox here and in the fact that um, that there hasn't been that much made about this pen in terms of its design kind of fits Jasper Morrison's aesthetic because he goes out of his way, in fact, to design objects, tools that um, are discreet, that don't shout, oh, we're, we've been designed by a famous architect or a famous artist. Instead, they kind of fit in and are evolved, or he calls it, I think, reprocessed from um, other forms, right, or, or from the original forms. So he's not thinking about, well, I'm going to make a fountain pen that doesn't even look like a fountain pen. I'm going to think about what makes a really good fountain pen and kind of evolve my design from that. And so this is not a pen that I think, you know, jumps out at you and says, oh, original. And yet the more you look at it, the more you live with it, the more beautiful its um, material is, the way it shines, its simplicity. So this is definitely a less is more kind of design aesthetic. Um, Morrison is against sort of the idea of creating tools or dishes or furniture that is going out of its way to be works of art um, or sort of expressions of the designer. Um, he wants these things to fit in, to be sort of part of everyday life, but to kind of raise the quality of everyday life. He wants them to function well, to have a certain elegance and um, a purpose, right? But not to shout. Um, uh, in 2007, along with his colleague, the, the Japanese designer Naoto Fukusawa, Morrison curated an exhibition entitled Super Normal in which he selected a whole bunch of objects. They both selected objects, uh, um, uh, tools, uh, scissors, coffee machines, um, uh, you know, uh, can openers, objects that he felt were um, representative of this aesthetic. And in many cases, they were things that we would call vernacular that don't even have name designers. Um, uh, but function beautifully or well. Um, in a sense, he was interested sort of also in the idea of almost the evolution of a design. So not thinking, well, you have to go back to the beginning and rethink the pen entirely, but what works well and how can you improve on that? I think that's a very interesting idea. It's no surprise that Lamy would approach um, uh, Morrison, it seems to me, they also worked with uh, Franco Clevio, who um, is also did a show that focuses on sort of everyday objects. He called his show Hidden Forms, and he, he talks about how his uh, pen designs were influenced by pens that he found at a flea market. So there's again this notion of sort of looking around you, seeing what works best, and refining that idea rather than necessarily starting again uh, from the beginning. So to put it in another way, the idea of um, design in some ways is almost anti-design in that you don't want your pen to look over-designed or overly uh, point to itself. And that may have worked against this particular pen sort of sticking out in uh, the fountain pen world because it's not ostentatious. It doesn't seem like a lot went into it until you really look at how beautifully, as I say, it's put together. Now, his entire aesthetic is really all about making subtle objects, subtle tools, um, uh, Example, he made these beautiful, I think very beautiful, but very subtle um, uh, forks and knives, place setting for Alessi. Um, uh, one of his very first, if, if not his first industrial design is a door handle. And he got the idea for the door handle by looking at an old vintage car 
and the handle on that car and then adapting it for industrial design. He's always about adapting things so they can be mass produced and hopefully can be made relatively affordable. Now, this pen is actually not super cheap. Um, it lists for around $89 and at a lot of stores you can get it for $70. And truthfully, I found them as low as $35, $40 on eBay. So it's not a terribly super expensive pen, but it's not a cheap pen for a steel nib pen, right? But it's quite heavy and substantial. And also when you're buying this pen, you're getting a pen that is designed by one of the world's famous designers. So to me, it's kind of like getting a work of art for a very uh, affordable price. So I like I like that about it, right? You know, I like something that is really carefully designed and looks beautiful and thought and is very thoughtful. And I think that's true of everything that um, Morrison um, designs, designs. One thing that's interesting about the pen, which is its name, Ion, where does that come from? Well, actually, it comes from a kind of Hellenistic deity uh, that means time. Now, Kronos also is a god of time. But this god of time is a kind of cyclical time. It is the idea of a kind of eternal time, a kind of time that comes in circles. And um, the god is often depicted as a, a male nude at the center of the zodiac, of a circle, or accompanying the circle of the zodiac. So there's this idea of the eternal that is built into, I think, also Morrison's design is a hope that he's made something that is so simple, so functional, that it doesn't even have a time, that it's timeless, if you will. There's another way in which I think, you know, that he might have been thinking about it is that the process by which the pen is made, um, the way that it is um, uh, almost one piece of metal, it's meant to look almost like it came from one piece of metal, and then it is, uh, br great. Then there's this, this brush brush effect to it, which is created by um, a machine, uh, a robot that actually creates this um, uh, brushed effect on the metal. Um, that is almost as if the metal is being stripped, right? And I think there is something about stripping the pen down to its essential quality that that maybe is associated with this idea of Aeon, who is a kind of nude god, right? Um, another thing to say about the pen is that um, in some of the reviews, they say, well, the finial is blank. There's nothing on the top of the bottom. And I think that's not true at all. While there's it, it's one continuous piece of metal, it is beautifully um, uh, 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 cut down and curved and shines in a way that I think is to me is the most beautiful thing about the pen on the bottom and the top. So it's very subtle. Um, it's as if he took um, the Lamy Safari and wedded it to the Parker Durofold, certain pens that are classics. And then I think he may have been thinking of streamlined pens. Perhaps something like the uh, wall ever sharp skyline pen that was designed by Henry Dreyfus, um, you know, particularly perhaps a bit in the um, clip. Um, another way of thinking about the design is seeing it as being um, a younger sibling of um, two other Lamy pens, the Lamy LX, which is so similar in size and also has this kind of um, brushed look. And then the Lamy um, Studio. And particularly when you take the cap off, when you look at the Lamy Studio, the um, Ion seems like a wider, fatter version, so it seems very close, actually. So definitely um, J Jasper Morrison isn't thinking of doing something that's radically different, but thinking in terms of the tradition of Lamy itself and the evolution of the pens within the family.
let's talk just about the basic aspects of the pen. Um, see that it posts really nicely. It is slip cap, clicks nicely, and then comes apart, and it would take a cartridge or a converter. Here you can see it's a Lamy, standard Lamy converter or a standard Lamy cartridge. How much does it weigh? Well, it's almost 33 grams. Take the cap off. Hard to do. It is 21 grams. So the cap is quite, quite heavy. Cap weight, it's almost 12 grams. So uh, that's why even though it posts very well, you may decide not to post it. Now in terms of size, here it is. We can compare it to the line Safari. You can see that it's almost exactly the same size as the Lamy Safari. And here, here it is in comparison to the Metropolitan. It's a little bigger than the Metropolitan. And we're talking about five and a half inches closed. When you post it, it becomes six and a quarter inches, really. One thing that is slightly different about the pen is the nib. Um, this is the Z53 nib. It's slightly more pointy. It is very similar to the same kind of nib that is on the um, Lamy Safari and a lot of the other um, sort of low $100 pens in the Lamy um, line, you can use a Safari nib on the Aeon um, and vice versa. I've done it already. You can pull them off and switch them. But they did come up with a new nib that is a little more pointy and perhaps subtly goes with this new pen. Um, so what's wrong with the pen? Is it is it perfect? And by no means is it perfect, I think. Um, well, it's quite heavy. Uh, and I think when it's uh, posted, it's not that it's, it's back weighted. It's just the whole pen kind of feels heavy in my hand. And if I had to write for it with hours, I think I would get tired. Um, oh, the truth is these days is that very few people use fountain pens if they use fountain pens at all, but if they do use them, they don't necessarily use them to write all day with them, writing pages and pages. Pen people tend to do that on their computer, so maybe that's part of part of the issue. Um, but even if I'm writing five pages in my journal, I find it a bit heavy, and I I I prefer to write with it unposted. But in general, I like posting my pens because then I know where the cap is. So that's, that's a problem for me. I would prefer it with, if it were lighter. The other problem I think is, is the biggest problem, which is that the section is too smooth. I find that it's a bit uh, hard to hold the pen. It's a little bit slippery, and I would prefer it if it had um, some kind of uh, way to make, whether you know, by, by having some uh, more abrupt change in the material, at the at the section so that it feels better when you're writing with it so it doesn't feel so slippery in the hand so to, for me that's a problem um if i had my uh, dream with lamy i would ask that they uh, go back to jasper morrison and have a have him refine the design even further now that they know how it works and how people what what, what people think of it and how, um, I think that would go along with his aesthetic of evo evolution. Um, they are introducing new colors, which is very attractive uh, with the pen, but I think it would be nice if they actually 
change the material at the section so that uh, perhaps maybe you know, making it out of rubber. Um, another Lamy design pad, the Nex, which is cheaper, um, is much more comfortable because it has um, a rubber section. But I have to say the Nex pen is is weird looking. It's not it's not anywhere as elegant or as beautiful as the James Jasper Morrison pen. Um, it kind of looks overly designed and fussy to me. Um, but uh, more and more as I've used it, I find it's an extremely comfortable pen. And yet it's hard to sort of justify decisions that it starts at a triangle at the back and then turns to a circle. All these things seem to be decisions made to make to, to design it, to make it designy rather than necessarily functional. And uh, or even if they are functional, it seems to me it could be less showy and less um, and somehow more uh, elegant or or substantial. There's something about the next pen which seems a bit cheap. It's remarkable that the Safari pen, which is all plastic uh, and much lighter than either of these pens, has a kind of um, a rightness to the form and design. Uh, that I think works. Um, and yet it doesn't seem, um, it, it lacks a certain seriousness, I think. There's something about it that doesn't seem appropriate to deep thoughts. Um, and that's not true of, I think, uh, the uh, Aeon, Aeon pen, which really does have a quality of uh, dignity to it, I think. Uh, and elegance, which um, and discretion, which I think makes it fit uh, the job of writing private thoughts in a journal. Um, I, I really get a tremendous amount of pleasure from these pens, and I have I like them so much. I've I've decided to have, try to have all the different colors. I just think I just think it's beautiful to look at. It gives me joy, even if I don't think it's the greatest pen to write with. I know that sounds paradoxical and hardly the ultimate goal of Jasper Morrison. Um, you know, the problem is, is that sometimes less is not more. Sometimes simplifying something, even though it's a process of design and paring down, can actually take away from the functionality of a uh, tool. Um, it, and also, of course, when you make something very minimal, it too can be very um, representative of the designer. After all, uh, clearly Jasper Morrison, that's the type of thing he enjoys and likes. So it is expressive of the artist and the maker, uh, even if it may seem to be so simple that it is not designed. That too is a kind of expression, right? Uh, just as being deadpan or blank and face is itself an expression, a kind of absence of expression is expression. It's interesting to compare the Aeon pen to another pen designed by a well-known architectural team, Trix and Robert Hausman for Acme Studio. Acme Studio uh, in the past has also um, hired designers um, who are artists, um, architects, etc. Um, they have taken almost the opposite um, uh, path, creating something that that purposely is strange and and whimsical and doesn't exactly look like a pen. It looks more like some kind of strange pod. And we can that's particularly true if you compare it to what now uh, looks almost boring or as um, Jasper Morrison would say, super normal. And this pen, in fact, by the Houseman team, is not a very good writer. Um, it's more something that makes you think about what a fountain pen might be. Um, their whole aesthetic is to make things strange, to make you question your environment and not take it for granted. Um, and that is a very different um, approach than the approach of Jasper Morrison, which is really all about sort of fitting in, 
but then creating something that is subtle and distinctive that you need to notice. This model of uh, design is something that tends to sell and be more popular and easier to sort of get into the mainstream, uh, arguably, than something that is weird like this. But, um, so they're very different um, design approaches. Somewhere in between, I think, is something like the Lamy Safari, which has really become a classic, but you have to remember when it first came out, it probably did look quite strange and different and contemporary. Um, it's certainly a lot more complex than um, the Aeon pen, but in that complexity, it's doing things like it has an ink window. And as we've pointed out, or as I pointed out, it has a section that is much easier for with your fingers to hold it. Some people don't like that, but it really helps you hold the pen in exactly the right way to write. So its complexity actually functions. I think there's a mistake sometimes in thinking in design that something that is minimal um, is necessarily functional. And I think that's something that actually gets confused a lot in the rhetoric around Lamy's um, designs in which they kind of emphasize form following function. Often things like making this uh, metal, the section metal, and making this so seamless is really less a matter of function than a matter of form, the aesthetic. Um, and uh, designers are making compromises all the time uh, to, between sometimes the function and the form. Not always can you get the form to be exactly what you want if you want the pen to function really, really well. I think the pen that does uh, both these things and why it is such a classic is the Lamy 2000. Um, which, by the way, does have a, a small ink window and does have a section which is not slippery because it's of a different material. Um, it would have been easy to make this all the same material. Um, and in fact, the stainless steel version does that and it loses the ink window. So form isn't following function, really. Form is following aesthetic as the pen uh, evolves in some ways in order to make it seem more beautiful or just different. And that's another aspect of design, which is that we don't want things always to look exactly the same, that we do like variety. And sometimes you want something that isn't so classic, but is very of the moment. And then later you move on to something else. So that's some of my thoughts about design. We'll come back to it with other, other pens. I hope you enjoy this. If you do, don't forget to subscribe. Um, now I'm going to do a writing sample, and we're also going to have a, a small drawing of an amaryllis uh, just in time for winter. So how does it write? This is the Lamy Pan, and this is a medium, and this is Lamy Green, it's a cartridge, and this is Rhodia paper. Um, it's not super wet, it's not dry. The nib is, has absolutely no variation. Quick. Jumps. 
over the lazy dog. Um, there's quite a lot of feedback. I wouldn't say that it's scratchy. It's actually a little bit different from the typical safari nib. Good flow. You can do a little reverse writing. Here is the extra fine. I'm not a big fan of extra fine, but it seems this is um, in red ink. Actually, for an extra form, this is quite smooth. A little bit of feedback. I think I would say that in uh, in the case of the medium, that's a little finer than a typical Safari medium. So it's the Z53 nib on the uh, Aeon. And the Z50 is the nib on the Safari. But as I say, you can swap the nibs. And I actually like the broad, so I can put broad nib from one of my safaris on this, which is nice. <laughs> 